Knock, knock, tomato. Who's there? I'm hoping you can tell me that. Where are we going and who are we meeting? You are going to love this one. Today we are going to meet Randy Feltface, the vegan puppet. I love Randy Feltface. I love him so much more. <laughs> Why are we doing that? Why? He is really connected to nature. He loves the natural world. And I think he made the decision to go vegan because he loves animals, he loves nature. He saw that as the biggest thing he could do. Right. But that's not his message to you. Well, what is his message? I'd love to know. He wants us all to change how we're living in our homes so we can protect animals in their homes. Because what we do, everything we do has an impact. We turn on a light switch, impact. We turn on our gas stove, impact. We don't necessarily see it, but it's impacting the natural world, which is our home. It's our home. So Randy's got a big message for us. Very similar to James All Electric Alston in Tassie. I remember him. Message being electrifying everything is the fastest way we can work on the climate emergency. Because when we electrify everything, our homes and our cars and have all of our energy sources coming from renewable energy, that's gonna be the fastest and cheapest way for us to decarbonise our world, which is what we need to do. I'll tell you what, it sounds like this puppet should be pulling the strings. It's pretty easy for a uh, puppet to be vegan when you've got no digestive system. Yeah, there's that. Are you talking to me or the goose? A dead, 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 dead. Flow state, flow state. There's a goat just down here looking at me. I'm off, I'm ready to go. Randy Feltface, electrify everything. Do you want me to enter? Who are you and why am I interviewing you? My name is Randy Feldface and I believe you're interviewing me because we have a shared love of the natural world and a concern for its longevity. We're here to talk about the climate. Slatsy. You're bang on there, mate. You're bang on. Now, where are we? What are we doing here and why are we doing it? We're at the Collingwood Children's Farm on beautiful Wurundjeri country and we're here to engage with the world around us. There's lots of beautiful animals here. I like to come down here and press my face up against a goat or a sheep or a duck. Reminds me that I'm not better than and I need to take care of. Did you catch my drift, Slatsy? I'm getting you now, sir, I'm getting you. I chose this place for us to meet because I feel like this is the kind of place where I come to think, I come to engage, I come to feel part of the larger spectrum of the natural world. And it's just down the shops. I don't have to kind of go out and climb a tree and, and feel like a koala. I can just look at a duck. Well, or you can just look at me, who's much like a koala. You are a little bit koala-like, and I appreciate that about you. You're very huggable. Thank you very much. Now, mate, what opened your eyes to the climate emergency? I came to the climate emergency from a vegan perspective. I went vegan first because that seemed like a very simple way for me to reduce my impact on the planet based on my understanding of the impacts of animal agriculture. And from there, I started looking at climate change in general and, and what causes it and how we can change it and why it happens. Now I'm just like, my eyes are open to the truth and I'm walking around on a daily basis thinking about how I can change my footprint on this beautiful planet that we only have one of. Randy, why on earth do you want to save the planet? Because I live here and I'm quite fond of it. You give me a deep breath of refreshment. I love it, I could drink you. I'm like Listerine for the mind. But also, you know, you say that, but it's not like I'm some giant climate warrior who's single-handedly changing the planet. They're very simple, small things that you can do. And I think people get very overwhelmed at the scope of it, the massive, overwhelming mountain of, oh my God, how am I gonna do anything to help the planet? But it's very simple. You can just start at your home and just make little changes. And it's not that terrifying. Mate, as a famous puppet, you travel a bit. What's some of the best climate solutions that you've seen? I've seen a lot of eco-certified hotels out there on the road. I've seen a lot of cities that are committing to huge recycling programs. I've seen a lot of cities that have electric bikes or electric cars or just cyclists in general. I've seen countries like France and Spain and Denmark and Greenland commit to a ban on fossil fuel extraction and exploration. So I've seen people doing stuff and, uh, and I like it. I like it a lot. I've seen things. I've seen things, Wayne. <laughs> I've seen things I can't unsee. France has committed to no more single-use plastics. They went into the supermarket and went, look at this giant pile of plastic. Why am I wrapping my broccoli in plastic? It's not necessary. I'll wash it when I get it home. For the love of sweet slatsy, the waste is unbelievable. What do you say to people or puppets who 
don't understand that we're right now in a climate emergency. I say to them that it's happening, that it's undeniable. And I would say to those people, do the small things that you can do to help. And be, we can reverse it. We can change a lot of this. All hope is not lost. You see a light switch, turn it off. The kettle's on, switch it off. Are you using gas? Get off the gas. Go electric. Has your car on diesel? Get an electric one. Ride your bike. Recycle your stuff. Stop buying new things. You don't need them. What happens to your compost? What do you do with your scraps? What are you doing with your scraps? Do you eat meat? Why are you eating meat? Do you drink milk? Why do you drink milk? It's for cow babies. Stop drinking fluid designed specifically for baby cows. I mean, I don't know how much this is gonna help. I don't know if people wanna hear it put in this perspective, but I would just say to people, snap the f What do you wanna see happening? Immediately, I wanna see this country in particular stop extracting and exploring for fossil fuels, stop starting new fossil fuel projects. And I want better engagement in the world around us so that we understand that we're not better than everything else on this planet and we have to take care of it. That's what I want. Randy, what's the one thing that I should be doing? Electrify everything, get off gas, renewable energies, no more fossil fuel, very simple. Check what your energy company is, what are their policies? Look at where you get your energy from and if it's not from renewable sources and if it's not electric, change it. Change it now, change it today. All right, dig it, thanks. Oh, and go vegan. Okay, done, tick. Don't eat the aminals. Climate change 101, in 60 seconds, tell me what are the things that I need to be doing. Ready? Start the clock. The planet has its own composting system where animals and plants break down over millions of years and they're converted to energy deep within the ground in the form of gas and petroleum and coal and oil and what we call fossil fuels. At some point we realized if we extract those fossil fuels, we can burn them for energy. The problem is burning those fossil fuels creates carbon, which heats the planet, which causes all sorts of problems with weather and the ocean and the natural environment. And the one thing that you can do is stop using fossil fuels and get onto renewable source of energies like solar and wind. How long was that? Yeah, I actually tried to count with my fingers and I don't, I kept on putting too many fingers down. So yeah, no, just perfect. Would you like to come and look at a goat with me? I would, yes, I'd love that. Press your face against a goat. Makes everything better. Okay. Mmm. It does make it better. Doesn't it? Mmm. This is my favourite goat. <sighs> mm -hmm.